Hi, welcome back to Faithful Hacking. We are going to look at challenge number one. So this is our lab challenge number one. And this is a preparation for our first test, which will actually be a real challenge. But in this case, we're going to look at the lab and what we need for this. Now, this is after importing the machine. So I imported the criminal web server, which uh, might be listed as CD Web 01. It might be listed as Crime Net 01, whatever it is. But it's the criminal web server, which is Ubuntu. I uh, imported that and I've imported, well, actually, I think it's Linux Mint. Anyway, uh, next I imported the criminal reactor, which is a free BSD 12 box, I believe it is. <clears throat> so we've got that running there. Now, one thing you'll notice is on the free BSD box, it has NAT network access. That means we cannot access this machine from our host machine. And over here on the criminal web, we have host only adapter, which means we can access the criminal website from our host machine. And then we can, on the same machine, access the NAT network, so that means we can access the criminal reactor. Now I'm going to power on both these machines, so I'm going to click those machines, and when I power them on, I'm going to do a headless start. So just doing a headless start here, that's going to power on the machines. It's not going to give me anything as in a terminal that I can log into or anything else like that. It's just going to power these machines on, and, and these machines are going to run in the background. Now this is to simulate for educational purposes or entertainment purposes, whatever works best, right? Uh, hacking into a, uh, a website and then hacking over to a reactor, a criminal website and a criminal reactor, uh, which, which you know, we want to keep it from blowing up. So we're going to look at that and we'll see how it goes. And a couple things we're going to need. Let's go ahead and set up a little folder for our, our challenge here. We'll put our little exploits in here. So uh, one of the exploits is a web shell which is actually over right here in the description. So we go over here, settings, and we go to description. We can see we've got this file right there. Very simple uh, PHP web shell. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back over to that window and create a new document, empty document. And I'll call it webshell.php, just like that. Pop into that, paste it, and there you go. So save it, and we're good to go. So that gives me that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new window too. Uh, we've got the challenge 64 there, so let's go ahead and pop in uh, that challenge. It's just base 64 encoded. I'm gonna pop in and decode that. So what we do is just open this in terminal, and over in the terminal, we're gonna look at our files cat that challenge you can see it's base 64 encoded we'll cat the challenge and then do a base 64 decode and this right here gives you all the things that you need to know about the lab so we've got that I'm gonna go ahead and pop that over in this text document so we can walk through this and I tried to give you as much information as possible so you can memorize this so there's no secrets as you go through this process so the entire thing is there's a web server we're going to hack into the web server then once we're in the web server we're going to pivot over to the back end reactor core so we're going to which is a back end free bsd server so uh, first we need to hack into the web server which it's saying visit 192.168.56.101 and we'll just open that up in our, our firefox browser Drag this up here, and we're going to 192.168.56.101. And there we go. We got you know this is a demonstration for educational purposes. Uh, we've got a place we can upload a file right there, so we're going to select that and upload our web shell up to this system. So if we see right there, we've got the web shell PHP. We're going to open that. No. One of the other files that we're going to be using on here is called Brutus. So I'm going to start upload. And if we read through the lab right here, we can see that we've got, first of all, import the machines, change the MAC addresses, create your own web shell from the description. You can visit there, upload the web shell, and create a bind shell. But before I create a bind shell, I know that there's another file here. We're going to want to upload Brutus, which is a Python script. And we're going to want to get this uh, 
this raw password list right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So the way we're gonna do that is once again, I'm gonna pop over here, open a terminal. Inside the terminal, I'll just do the curl right there. And that gives me past that list. So you can see that this curl statement went over to uh, Daniel Meisler's site and downloaded the Rock U word list. And we stripped off the first 35 right there. So we may use that a little bit later on. And next we need to grab Brutus, uh, which is the um, a brute forcer for FTP sites. So let me, I think I've got that a right temp right now. Let me see if I can. Okay, we bring that up. I'm going to go over to raw right here. And there we have the file. There's the raw gist. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Go back over here. And I'm going to open a terminal. Inside the terminal, I'm just going to do a wget or do a curl. Do a curl dash. SSL, grab that. And we'll output that to Bruce.py. Brutus.py, be sure that I didn't miss anything up there. It's all good. All right. So, a big thanks over there to uh, Philip for creating this utility. It's a, it's a fantastic utility, and I'm glad to have it. Okay, let's pop out of there. Okay, so now I've got a few more files here. I'm going to go ahead and upload those over here. So, I'm going to go back, choose upload. I'm actually using this criminal's website to host all of my hacking tools. So, uh, the first thing is, you know, they give us the ability to upload stuff, so, you know, we will. Now, because their permissions are not set right, you can say it's gone to the uploads directory. Or to the uploads directory right there, and sure enough, there's my stuff. Now, <clears throat> now the next portion right here for the lab, we're going to open up web shell, and that right here gives us our web shell. See, we've kind of done some web shell stuff in the past right there. In fact, that one looks pretty good. I think I might use that as a reverse shell. So to create a reverse shell, what I'm going to do is this bash-c and run this command, bash-i, which is going to be interactive. Output that to dev tcp, which I don't know what my IP address is right now. Let me go pop over and see what my IP is. There we go. I am 51.17. Perfect. Send it to dev tcp 5117 I'm going to take all of the standard error and output that to standard output. And then I'm going to take any standard input and insert that back into the stream right there. So before I execute this, I have to create a listener. So I'm going to create a netcat listener. So I'll do it with verbosity on there. So that's the listener. Be verbose about it. Do not resolve names. And on a particular port, that's 8080. So I'll do that. So now I've got this listening on this side. I'm going to go ahead and make that always on top so you can kind of see this live. And I'm going to go over here and press enter. And right there, it sent me, oh, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to exit right away. So that's a oh, yeah, frustrating, a bit frustrating there. So I can try it again. I can throw um, additional text on the end. We can look over here and see if there are any notes on this. And this only occurs in particular instances. So if you uh, if you know what that instance is, if you want to communicate that in the notes or description below, uh, that's great. But go ahead and pop, pop it in the YouTube description and we'll look at those notes. Uh, over here is a little alternative way of doing this right there. And it is just saying, you know what, we're going to throw a sleep tint on that. Take off this zero at the end. 
this or do this. We can just try to run it just like that on the reverse shell. So we get this backup of this thing. Press enter and it gives me exit right away. And over here, if you look at the notes on the lab, it's like, you know what, if you have problems with this, then run this right there. And I just run that code. And not everybody is going to experience this. Very few of you probably will experience this. But you run that first. Start your listener. Then run that code. And look at that. Now we're on the box. We say, who am I? And we can see who we are. And if we look in the directory, we can see in the directory we got Brutus Pass and Web Shell. So we got some cool stuff in there. First thing that we're going to want to do is we want to gather some information. So and as long as we want this to keep running, let that keep running. So we're, we're going to leave that web page out. But let's gather some information. So let's pop over here and we're going to scroll down. And it's got a list of a whole bunch of information we might want to gather right there. So I'm just going to paste that in. Press enter right there. And you can see we've got some users on here, which that's cool to know. Uh, you can see what's running. They Let's see, they got a web server running. They got a print services running. Uh, something on 5353 53 of UDP and 59803 of UDP um, IPv6. So something like that running right there. <clears throat> we look up here, we can see kind of how much space they've got. They got a 48K drive. We can go over and look at where it's all mounted. Uh, we can see what system it is. Yeah, it is Linux Mint. Look at that. Uh, we can see right there what uh, the kernel, when that was built, what kernel it is. And we can see the IP addresses, the 1 and 10.02.11. So now I know that we access this on 192. So right up there, you can see that 192.168. Well, we access that system. So that means the 10 network is the back end network. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up again. Take this off the top. So that means I need to scan that 10 network. Well, in order to scan this, I'm going to create a rudimentary scanner. And um, I'll scan sections at a time. So I can tell that we are 11. So uh, once again, I'm going to do what I have config. You can see that we're 10, 0, 2, 11. And I'm just going to start, let's say, with maybe 20 at a time. So I'll say for IP, or we can say for num. I'll put var num in there so you can see that's the var variable. In, and I'll just do a sequence. And I'll just say a sequence of 12, and we'll go to, uh, I don't know, uh, 32. All right, let's do it 20 at a time. Right there. 12 to 32. Do ping dash c1 dash w1 10.0.2 dot dollar sign var num this sequence right here is going to count from 12 to 32 and by putting that var num right there then over here we're going to 10.0.2 dot 12 13 14 15 etc it's going to run through in a for loop now uh, let's see one of the things we might want to do that is we might want to run all that as at once so run all those at once and then over here um, just do that that'll ping everything at one time and we're only doing 20 at a time hopefully it will fit on the screen if not we can now uh, we can take everything and redirect it out to uh, standard out and then grep it but we're going to try this okay so went through and it pinged everything and i'm just going to scroll up here and see if anything came up okay there you go we have one host that responded the rest are saying 100 percent packet loss so everybody else is 100 percent packet loss and we have one host that said it's online it's 10 0 21 now this is a manual ping scan that we just created here so this manual ping scan that we built uh, can definitely be improved upon. In fact, let me see if we have a little improved code in here. Main hosts didn't received. Oh yeah, look at that. That might be better. We do that right there. Yeah, that's really nice and clean. 
And what this one does, it runs them all simultaneously and then pipes that to rep one received. And you can see we got 211, 21, 3, 2, 1, all responded back. And 21 is the one that we're concerned with. 1, 2, and 3 are in virtual box that's on our local machine. Anything up here on 11, that's the machine we're logged into right now. So if we do an IF config, you'll see that we are currently on 11. So therefore, 21 is our target. So how do we scan 21? Well, you can scan that with, oops, <coughs> you can scan that with Netcat, which hopefully it's on the system. So we'll do a Netcat and we'll give it a shot. Um, we'll see what options we put in here. Okay. This is giving you a couple of features in here. We're giving verbosity on here. We're scanning some some stuff. We're not resolving names. We're giving it maximum wait time of one second. And that's in the uh, uh, lab notes right here. And we're looking for succeeded. Or succeed. Oops. Can't do that. That'll cause problems. And you can't go home either. Yeah, we'll just get rid of this. Ding. There we go. Okay. So right here, we can see that we're doing netcat. We're waiting for a second. We're not resolving names. We are doing the scan feature of Netcat. We're being verbose about it. We're scanning that host and we're looking for ports 21, 22, and 23. And we're taking standard error. We're outputting that to standard out. And then we're grepping for the word succeed. So let's see what we get here. Beautiful. We see that port 21 and port 22 succeeded on these systems. Well, Brutus is an FTP brute forcer. So there you go. Let's brute force some names um, right there because 21 is an FTP port. Let's brute force some stuff from this host. So if you look back over in our, uh, if you look back over our directory here, you can see this Python 3, we'll run Brutus, press enter. It gives you an idea of how to run it. It says, uh, run Brutus, do your word list in there, do a host and a username, and then you got some verbos verbosity if you want to be verbose about the output. So, sure, let's go to shop. We'll do a Python 3, Brutus.py, and we're going to do a dash W for the word list. I think it's pass, yeah, pass.list is what I called it. It's my word list. Then the host is 10.0.2.21, I think it was. And then uh, the username we want to ha attack first is Vlad. We had two names. One was Vlad, the other was Svetlana. So I'm going to copy all that and get ready to do the same thing for Svetlana's account. So I'm going to press enter. Okay, sweet. It found the password for Vlad. Chocolate. Beautiful. And next I'm going to do uh, Svetlana right there. I'll do a dash V at the end. We'll, we'll see what it says. All right. Tried a bunch of stuff and it found the password. So kind of makes a lot of noise. But there you go. Now we got the passwords. We got uh, Svetlana's password is Butterfly. And Vlad's password is Chocolate right there. Excellent. Well, in that case, let's see if we can secure shell over to that host as Vlad. So Vlad at 10.0.2.21. Okay, we got a, an issue here. And the issue is, is not because of our password or because it's using key authentication only. If you look at this, it says that our standard in is not a terminal. Oh my goodness, look at that. Well, let's make that a larger. Okay, if our standard input is not a terminal, how do we fix this? Well, the fastest way I know to fix this issue is to do script dev null. That's going to send all the output for script dev null. Run a command, bin bash. Bada bing. So now we're running a real terminal emulated by script, right? And we're going to try this SSH Vlad again. Try this. Yes, let's continue. Password is chocolate. We're in. Okay. It says remember to create a password for communication server. Okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, remember to change the SSH keys. Currently, I can access root from my local account via SSH without password. 
Yeah, so Vlad's good at leaving himself notes, and that is really good. Uh, this system right now has a, uh, a, a reactor shutdown schedule, which is going to cause the reactor to explode. We're pretending, of course. Uh, but there you go. So we need to shut this thing down. So we're going to find this uh, PSAUXW, and we're just going to look for the shutdown process, see if that's running anywhere. Sure enough, there it is. It's going to shut down at 8.30 tonight. And it is, uh, it says reactor coolant failure at 2030 hours unless shutdown is canceled. So we got some time, right? So let's go ahead and kill it. We're going to type kill 695 with kill dash 9, 695, and see what happens to us. Uh oh. Operation not permitted. What was this note right here? Root access from my local account via SSH. Well, okay. Um, let's just do a sudo dash s. Ah, FreeBSD doesn't have sudo installed. We're going to do a su dash. Okay, can't do that. Let's try what he said. We'll do a ssh vlad at, no, root at localhost. Bingo. Vlad has the keys inside of his system. So if I cat this, cat root dot SSH authorized keys, then you'll see, look at that, Vlad is actually registered on this system with keys. He doesn't need a password. Beautiful. So he can pop into root wherever he is, wherever his key is. We couldn't do it via password. We couldn't switch to the root account but we could SSH into the server that we're currently on as root because of these shared keys. This is a, sharing keys is a common thing you'll see core administrators do. And this is some, this is one of the ways that we can exploit that. Of course, given we can get this far. So now we're on here, we'll do a PA, AUXW, we'll grep for the shutdown. And we can see 695 is running. So I'm going to kill that. So I'm going to say kill dash 9, uh, 695. And now I'm going to do the ES again. I'm just highlighting and then middle clicking on my mouse. Let's see if that works. All right. We stopped the shutdown process. It has been canceled. Fantastic. And on FreeBSD, we can't just do a shutdown dash C because FreeBSD does not support that. I think this is FreeBSD. Uh, what is this? FreeBSD 12. So this is FreeBSD 12 one right there. So it's an older version of BSD, does not support shutdown dash C. That doesn't work. Um, okay, so now we've done that. There's actually one more file that our, our notes mention. And if we go down to the notes here, it says there is a C0X01A file that's running at the same time. Well, let's look for that. P, PS, grep C0. That. And sure enough, it is running. So I'm going to try to kill that. 687. So I'm going to kill dash 9. 687, which dash 9 is not a nice way to do it. But, you know, I'm trying to save the world, stuff like that. And uh, I want to be as effective as possible the first time. So I'm going to grab this again. Look for it. It is gone. Excellent. We have finish the lab. So that's it. We have done the whole challenge. We went through and you can imagine that there would be a lot of kind of searching around to get through some things. Uh, one of them is the scripts command. When you don't have a real shell, you might need to go through and, uh, and run that script. Let's see. Is it here? Yeah, there you go. I've got it in here. So that script right there will give you a terminal and uh, or it will emulate a real terminal, make it look like you have a real terminal and you get around. And don't forget, when you're going through and collecting information about the system, and you're grabbing stuff like the usernames and passwords and IP addresses, think about how that plays into the challenge itself. I hope that this was helpful, and I look forward to talking to you next time.